Early spring is a good time to be on the lookout for gargany. They are rare but regularly breeding migrant ducks, and their old name of summer teal gives us a clue as to which is the most likely confusion species. We have covered teal, and especially the more confusing females, in an earlier workshop, but here is a quick recap. Teal are common, very small dabbling ducks. Over 200,000 birds winter, and they are found across the whole country, preferring to lurk around the vegetated edges of wetlands. In summer, just over 2,000 pairs are found, and again they're widely distributed, although they're scarcer in the south and west. The males are dapper little ducks, with most noticeably pale yellow sterns, and a horizontal white and black line on their sides. Their beautiful green and chestnut heads are only really noticeable at close range or in good light, when you will be able to see the cream outline to the patches as well. The female is more challenging, but again, as a recap, they are small, neat and well-proportioned birds with fairly plain, standard female duck plumage. Overall, the tones are grey-brown, and there is usually a small white flash under the tail. The head is fairly featureless, with the expected slightly darker crown and line through the eye. The bill is dark, but may also have a hint of orange at the base, and that's even more so on juveniles. In both sexes, there is a vivid metallic green speculum. In flight, which is rapid and agile, the dark head of the males contrasts with the rest of the body, and the green speculum is boldly ringed by white wing bar and trailing edge. Gargany are very scarce ducks, which are unique in Britain and Ireland in being our only migrant summering duck. All birds are long-distance migrants, with the first returning appearing in early March, with peak numbers being noted in mid-May. Although a common bird globally, only about 100 pairs breed in Britain and Ireland, mostly in eastern England, with a few in lowland Scotland and occasionally in Ireland. They are secretive when breeding, but migrants can turn up on any stretch of water, which is when they are most likely to be encountered away from well-known breeding sites. Gargany are similar size to teal, although they have longer heads and bills and appear more angular than the dumpy little teal. The slightly longer body does give a different jizz to Gargany, and they can appear long and strangely low slung in the water. Full breeding plumage males are handsome birds, with chocolate brown heads and a broad white eyebrow. The chest and back are dark, as is the stern area, but there is a noticeable pale silver-grey side, which can be pretty obvious, although it can often be blotchy, as birds quickly molt into and out of their breeding plumage. Recent migrants in spring seem to spend quite a lot of time asleep, with that distinctive head tucked in, and often the pale side panel can be the first clue to a bird's identity as a gargany. Males also lack the striking horizontal white line of teal, but their scapulas are very well marked and hang down over the sides. All gargany lack the obvious metallic green speculum, but have broad white trailing edges to the wings in flight. Females can look initially confusing, like teal, but there are some helpful points, and the most obvious of which is the stripy appearance to the head. These stripes are made up of a bold supercilium, a pale narrow cheek stripe, and a pale whitish chin and throat, contrasting with the darker crown and eye stripe. Combined with a characteristic pale spot at the base of the long, all-dark beak, this should be enough to confidently identify female gargany. On closer inspection, the whole bird looks longer and low-slung, with a longer tail, lacking a pale flash underneath, all the way to the long, dark beak. Juveniles are very similar, although usually slightly less well-marked, but the stripy head is discernible, and that pale spot at the base of the bill is always present.